All right, welcome back to the Comic Lounge. I'm back with me again. I got my boy Marty Keen, and we are going to talk some comics. Mostly, we're going to be talking Steel Streets, his Steel his homage <laughs> to the black and white comics. Mostly like a Ninja Turtle riff off, um, right. but it's so dope, dude, and it's it's it speaks to me. Like the minute you told me you were doing it, I think I saw the first book. I got yeah. super excited. I think I got one and two, and I knew you were working on three, so I just waited. Yes. And I read all three of them the other day because I wanted to oh, really? have it fresh in my mind. It's my favorite thing that you've done. Oh, great. Oh, wonderful. That's it's, awesome. It's dope. And um, quick plug, you know, I'll say it again at the end. Um, yeah. I know you're in a bunch of shops, East Coast. Uh, the shop yeah. I work at in uh, in LA, we got three locations and we got your books. I just okay. checked, sold a few of the number ones. And okay. then it looks like. Like that, we sold more number ones, and then we got right. twos and threes also that yeah. people are checking out and people are digging it. Yeah. So, um, That's great. people are coming back. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. Super stoked yeah, for thank you. you. Um, thank you again for letting me be in the shops, man. It's not you. I mean, now I'm coast to coast. You know, it's oh, crazy. of course, man. Like, I, you know, like if I could make a section there of just curated stuff that I could bring, I would do it for sure. I mean, in time, in yeah. Time, I just need to make, I just need them to let me make a like a wall or like a set complete right. section. You know, yeah. like I got you next to like Adam Lemna and yes. Eli Schwab and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick Lopez over there too. Um, all the ring are all there. Yeah. yeah, but let's so let's talk about Still Streets. Obviously, like I said, it's an homage. But what made you decide to do it? Um, well, I was so I was working on the seventh issue of the superhero series. And I was thinking of a post-apocalyptic uh, idea, story, whatever. And I decided to draw the, the, the helmet on the other character, though. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of doodling with that helmet and kind of liking it. And then I drew the first page of um, the issue one. And I was like, well, you know what? This has to be his own character. He has to be his own guy. And then the more I kept going, the more I started to, to feel like it was gritty, you know, kind of like the, the Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? Let me just... Because the first issue, I mean, there's no... I only had the idea to tie in the Ninja Turtles origin in the second issue. The first issue, I had, I just kind of riffed. I just, you know, how I write my comics is I, I do a page at a time. I never have an, an outline or something. I just go page mm -hmm. by page. And then after I did the first issue, I had the idea. I'm like, ooh, I should make this an homage because it already has that vibe. So let me just tie in a little more duo tone instead of, uh, instead of zipper tones. Let me uh, do a spin on that whole origin. And also because, you know, I love the turtles, so I wanted to carry the torch. Because mm -hmm. they spooked Daredevil, and now I'm doing that, and I'm hoping 20 years later some other guy does it to me. You know what I mean? That yeah. Kind of thing. But yeah, but it just it was kind of out of out of the blue, just for fun. And then it, it I was having a blast doing it, so it just I just kept going. Yeah. Has it been the like best responded to of all the books? Would you say? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think you know because I started making comics 20. 20 uh, 2021 july or june or something like that mm -hmm. so it's only it's been less than two years it's been a year and a half let's say and so the first series i did was just kind of me building up my storytelling my chops and slowly building the like the fan base and the the, the universe and the zuber comics the company all the, the publishing house all these things and then by the time i got to steel streets i had gotten a few fans but nothing sporadic and then People kind of like this book, but now they're going to my back catalog a little bit, which is cool, you know, but mm -hmm. definitely still streets is people are digging, digging the streets, you know? Like yeah, this. dude. I, I mean, it's like I said, it's my, it's my favorite of, of your stuff. Obviously I'm a huge Ninja Turtle head myself, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, I have the entire, first, fan, right? <laughs> yeah, I have the entire first Mirage, uh, the first volume, not first printings of all of the number one. Oh, you have the, the individual issues. I have all the individual issues. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing yeah that's i mean amazing. i got lucky when i when i picked them up like mm -hmm. they're not what they're going for now like they were they were right. you know decent price but like sure. the comic book market what it's gone gotten to yeah. now like we're at another like peak in terms of like the pricing it oh, feels really? like yeah. it feels like it needs to drop a little bit and level out which right. when it drops i feel like it'll still kind of be higher than it was obviously when um you know, at that time, because I when I got them, it was like 2000, 2003? No, mm -hmm. no, no, 2002. So I was just starting high school, and and I and I knew that they had Ninja Turtle comics, 
Right. But I didn't like, I didn't know about the black and white comics. So I was like, I just was a huge fan of the cartoon. Right. Like, I mean, I think we're around the same age. So, yeah. um, And then I I read that first issue. It was like a fourth printing. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, dude, this shit's way more violent. Like, I'm like, that's why the the original movie was darker. You know, like, I didn't realize. I'm like, I watched the cartoon and then I see them do this dark take on it. You know, like, it's just completely different. It's confusing. Yeah. 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 But I think you've done a phenomenal job. Um, I loved it. You know, I love black and white comics. I love like Zipatone, Duotone. Sure. Um, and I think you've you've done it very well. Thank you. Yeah, I did. So the way the Duotone board works. Yeah, I was kind of was going to ask you. Yes, yeah, so I, I I was looking at videos of you know there's some clips on YouTube Peter Lid and then the the kayfabe guys they have videos talking about it where basically it was this board of paper that had preset lines in it and that they had two sets of chemicals one that would bring out one set of lines and one that would bring out another darker set of lines and so what I did was in uh, procreate digitally i created two brushes where one was one set of line and one was the other and so essentially as i'm applying it you know digitally it's the same method as the regular duotone board and so i have one set of lines and i have the other and so i think i i managed to kind of get that texture of the duo that you see in the original comics a little bit i mean i went to the side like i scanned in a um uh a ninja turtle comic and then I, I got the line approximation to see, you know, to the size I wanted to do my comic, just yeah, to make dope. sure it wasn't too big or too small and stuff like that. Just to kind of, then when I got the brush, once I got the brush uh, locked in, then I was good to go. But, yeah. What was yeah. your first experience in Ninja Turtle Comics? The, the Mirage? It was like, honestly, two years ago? I was late in the game, man. Late in the game. Because like, like I said on, on the last uh, interview, I was... Uh, I was a musician. I was in that. I was yeah. in that world. I loved comics before, but I kind of not blocked it out of my of my mind. I just you know you lose interest as, as time goes on. You know you get older, you, you start to sort of you diversify. Let's say so. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got. I started collecting guitars before I started collecting comics. You know. Yeah. And so a couple of years ago, I just I I think it was through a kayfabe episode, honestly that I, they were doing a Ninja Turtles comic. I'm like, wait, what? That was a comic? Then I discovered the mask was a comic. That I said, I'm like, everything is comics. Life is comics. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. It's crazy. Same, same, like the mask, I didn't know until like... No idea. Later, you know? I, I don't know how old I was. I think I, I actually think I found it at a at a grocery store. Okay. But it wasn't like the original, it wasn't the OG mask. It was like a later, later series super dark and i'm like this is not Those comics are insane yeah like hilarious i love them but yeah crazy compared to the, to the thing yeah. but i grew up with um like over there if you see there's uh the bon dessiné like the french books like oh, Tintin, okay. lucky luke yeah. and so i was definitely more into that than i was into like main like american comics let's say and then an underground comic like the ninja turtles was completely off my radar yeah yeah i mean i think that uh Obviously, the the Ninja Turtles have been popular since we were kids, right? Like, yeah, they've course, gone yeah. through multiple generations, multiple. Yeah, my brother had the toys. I had the toys. Everybody. Same, yeah. So, definitely, I think like you putting your own kind of like spin, and I do think it's kind of I think it's cool, like how you said that they riffed off of like Frank Miller and the Daredevil right, yeah. kind of origin, and use that, and then you in turn also had it, but you had another creature in like it was just like yeah, you know yeah, yeah, kept yeah. pulling um what was what why a frog what what made you decide to Honestly, do a frog fuck if i know man I just, <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of just just i was just like i was like well look i don't know what's in the sewer man. maybe there's yeah. i didn't want to do a rat i don't know because i figured that'd be too i don't know i really don't know yeah. <laughs> i mean i think that yeah i think it's the design is is super dope i like the helmet like you said that was for something else um right, yeah, yeah. but this is also I, th- this is the only sequel book that you've done, right? Like you haven't done multi yeah. par- multi parts for your other characters. Uh, no, I, in the other books, it was sort of you know you get a little segments of their stories in the other books, so yeah. it's kind of connected, but not at all a sequential like storyline. And in this one, I'm very, I was adamant on doing like the the second book takes place right after the the first book and the and the third one as well. They're like and the fourth one's going to be just right right there. Right at the beginning, it's gonna be the first time I just do. So when I when you get the trade at the end of the day, it's just gonna be one big story. It's gonna be a graphic novel, I think. You know, when you 
everything is compiled together because there's no there's no real breaks in it. You know? Yeah. Are you now? You, so you're going to collect it eventually? Do you think you're going to do it in the same size, or would you? Would you think you would ever so, blow well, it up? I, I was actually experimenting with. I did this at a. I made these zines. I don't know to show you where I went um, magazine size to get. Oh, so the yeah. bigger. Yes. So this is oh. the original size. Oh man, I want that and, magazine size. <laughs> and this one I did stark, uh, black and white. So, so it's like there's no color in it. It's just pure, pure black and white on some on ivory paper. So it's very you know, has a lot more. It's just big. It's just big. It's different, different uh, feeling to it. And bigger, also, bigger's oh, better, bro. Bigger's, bigger's better. better. <laughs> well, we know we've been told that all our lives. And yeah, so dude, like, that's dope. It's nice. I, I like it a lot. It's pl it's pleasant on the eyes just because it's it's just bigger. You can see more of the art too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think if I were to ever trade them, it would it would be in a bigger format. Okay, cool. I mean, I did, I did, you know, because I did all three, and I might I might release them at some point because I have I have like ten of each. I think I made of those, yeah. that size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> those are fucking dope. I'm I'm telling you, like, I really I'm so happy for just in this short time since we last talked. You know, right. just you're very it's very inspiring watching you constantly. Like, you know, a lot of the people in the group are, are inspiring, but you have consistently been putting out book after book after book and you're doing it all. And I think, and I think just like the, the quality of your product, like I, when I, when I opened, I was there when it got delivered at the shop. Actually. Oh, oh yeah. Tell me so I opened the box. I was like, Hey, this is my boy's fucking book. And like, yeah, he started yeah. flipping through it and he was like, this is, and he's like, now this is what I want in the shop. This yeah. is dope. And he dug it. He's like, he starts flipping through and he's like, oh man, this is like Ninja Turtle. I'm like, oh, exactly dude. what it's supposed to be, you know? That's amazing. That's and amazing. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, just, and then your ads, dude, like you don't. Oh, the vintage, oh, the, in the back. Oh, yes. I don't pull the punches, man. I wanted to go. Let's, for it. let's yeah. talk about these ads, man. Cause like, please, yeah. You're like a wizard with the Photoshop, <laughs> dude. Like, this shit looks like. <laughs> I it's like all, I, I want to know where the toys come when the toys coming out, you know? Right, 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 right. Like all this stuff, dude. Like the other books. Like let's. I, I want to know. Like, is, oh, are these real books that are coming out? I there's another. Yes. Where did I see it? Suck man. So okay, so interesting. I got a few cartoonist friends of mine um, to participate in some of this. So Suck Man is actually a a friend of mine named Jean Califé, and his uh, his. Uh, Nom de plume is like the artist name is John Kaiser Knight, and he, you know, he created this thing, Suck Man. Yeah, and he has another one. This one was a ode to the French, the French books, you know, but it's the black and red book that I have, right? Know. I just did like a little sequel for it. A guy who's also on the ringside group, Clarence Das, he's a great, uh, he has a book out, he is a great uh, cartoonist. He, I asked him, I was like, Hey, do you want to do something? and he came up with just an NES game right away, and then I added some little fun, you know, like. Photoshop stuff around it. Um, then two other cartoonist friends, Kenny Wong, I call him the Brooklyn Ronin. Great mm -hmm. guy, great guy. I think he has a, he has a book coming soon. Okay. And uh, he did a you know a spoof on the insults that made a a man out of what is what is it? Uh, what is the insult? It's an old strip. Okay. And then another artist, uh, Jonathan Marks Barvecchia, did this beautiful watercolor wash monkey paw beer thing that we that we did. I don't know, man. I just I just love I. I don't like it when there are ads and like actual ads in the book that are just about like Rolexes and whatever. Yeah. I like it when there's fun vintage, just fake ads. I don't know. I just, I don't know, it's just fun. It's just a lot of fun. Like yeah, dude, stuff, it like, definitely like, adds like, to it. It definitely like, adds to the product. Yeah, like a Times Square ad. You know what I mean? In the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love the I love the letter like that you put in the back too because it kind of reminded me exactly of like the early mirage turtle books because they were constantly each issue like if you if you have the singles you know mm -hmm. i mean some of mine are later printing so like it wasn't right. the exact letter but like you can see the growth and the popularity of the comic because they're they're talking right. about it and they're about to get the cartoon deal and right. then they get the cartoon deal and right. then they get the movie deal and you start seeing it yeah. in the letter pages and i think it's i think that was a nice a nice touch that you added i mean yeah, because I mean it's all fake on my on my side. So I'm just yeah, like, yeah. Hey, I'm thinking Times Square, like we're blowing yeah. up, guys. <laughs> yeah. 
no, de- definitely dope, dude. Um, the reason I, I did the Ninja Turtles, it just it just came to me is because I think as an indie creator, those guys are like the indie gods. Right. They when when I think of the turtles, when I read their comics, it sells the dream to me. You know, it makes me think, oh, it's so possible. And even not even at that scale, it's like it's just for the love, it's for the culture. You know, it's for the the craft and everything. That's what they mean to me. You know. So I think dude, I had to do an homage of of that, you know, for sure. Yeah, I think that you know, like like I said, like all your books for the, except the Steel Streets, like you're doing different genres, you're messing yeah. around with different like uh, tropes and stuff. And yeah. I think that that was kind of a cool idea, you know, like keeping it fresh. You're always getting something different from you, you know, yeah. and it lets you exercise your different like loves for different like genres, right? Yeah. But this one, like I, I already knew that I, I, it would be popular, especially like in the group, because there's a lot of turtle heads. And I think that there's, for the most part, like not just turtle fans, but the fans of the comics, you yeah. know? And I just think it was a very smart move. And I, it, I mean, it's clear that you're enjoying yourself in this you know because i see like just from one to three like it yeah. just keeps getting it just keeps getting better you know as you're going on like the fucking there's a where's the page <laughs> hold on there's when the, the they're fighting it's black um, and, the, it's like a lot of the lettering that you do did you do that all by hand too um so uh, funny the like the stuff like this book. like that's right, all by right, hand right. right no actually that's that's digital really so the thing is, my style doesn't really, because it's all gritty. It doesn't change whether I do uh, digital or practical. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, we have a day job, we got time, and I and I just, I need to draw every day. I need to do it every day. So if I'm out on about, I just take my the iPad with me. Dope. So I'm constantly making pages. And so the books are a splice of of uh, digital and practical. Like, uh, yeah, like these are some... For issue four, like these are some practical pages I got done at Baltimore Comic Con. I was just, you know, sitting on my thing, just playing. But it's a, you wouldn't tell. I have another page. The next page after this one is a digital page, but there's no discrepancy. You know what I mean? And when I discovered that there's no discrepancy, I'm like, well, I can just do anything. There's no rules. <laughs> That's crazy. So you, so you have original art, but you don't have original art for an entire issue. No, no, no. Yeah. That's insane, dude. That's that's kind of crazy. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't know. I mean it's cool no i mean it's cool that it's cool that you're always doing it so like if you don't have pen pencil and paper you don't have a brush and paper you're just you're constantly creating which yeah. is really dope but yeah. it's just crazy to think that like you have original art but if somebody yeah. said i want that page you're like, like well i don't have that one but i got this one <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly you're gonna be like i have three quarters of that one and i have a sticky note which is that page maybe yeah. it's all it's all spliced in it got nope. moved together, yeah. But I mean, dope, for man. there's one thing. This other project I'm doing on the side is uh, the Country Gentleman. It's like this. I wanted to do a book like the European books. Yeah. And that one I decided to only do practically. Um, but to be like those books, I'm actually working on 18 by 24. So it's like a lot. Uh, I wouldn't be a good guest if I didn't have visual aid. Yeah. Oh, nice. So these are the pages I usually work at, and then this is what I'm working at here. And this one is all, you know, it's 1930s. It's all this stuff. So I'm drawing all these, all these cars, and it's all, you know. So th- this one I'm gonna have hopefully original art for every page, just because I'm, I'm, I'm that's what I decided to do. But, but dude, yeah, you, you're getting part. better with every every comic you put out, bro. I, mean, I just wanna, so. I just wanna say, dude, like you're putting in that work, dude, and it's 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 cool to watch. Because like I saw your first comics, because those were your first comics, the superhero stuff, right? Like the ones you first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like to watch the progression of your art from then, and like just like you just keep fucking knocking it out of the park, dude. It's it's cool to watch. Can you talk a little bit about the Country Gentleman and and uh, what that book's about? When it's gonna? When you think you're gonna do um, it? It takes place in this made up place called Chapwe City, and Chapwe City is kind of the back door of the universe where um, intergalactic travelers and any any which any type of people can have to use that place to get somewhere else, but they're not supposed to, right? And then there's this guy there called the country gentleman who doesn't realize that everything is, that, that it's a fake place. And so he has to stop these people. He's just con- compelled to, but he doesn't really know why. 
And so it was just my my excuse to draw Dracula and Frankenstein or whatever in 1930s garb with Tommy guns. That's, that's all it is, really. You just think about what you want to draw, then you create yeah. a story around it. But that's busy. I mean, I'm only eight or nine pages in, so it's just sort of slow. It's a slow burn. You know what I mean? Okay. Like Are you doing that burn. like while you're doing Steel Streets 4? Yeah. 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 I, I tend to, yeah, just kind of. Like the the Spider Man thing, the yeah. Let's talk, Spider Man. I want to I want to know about that. Dude. That shit looks. <laughs> was, was, I dope. mean, I did not expect it to have that effect uh, that it did, you know. But like that one is just, you know, when I'm after I've done a Steel Streets page or a Country Gentleman one, I just have the iPad and I just kind of you know doodle and I'm just making jokes to myself. I'm just having a good time. And then it came out this thing, which I finished it yesterday, which was amazing. Five days, a twenty page zine done. Like I'm gonna get it printed for sure because now. I feel like people need to see it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I when I saw that you did a commission at Baltimore, I saw the Spider Man. I'm like, dude, yeah. that's a dope like rendition of Spider Man because it's like he's creepy looking. You know, you made that's him look think. creepier, like Spider-Man, Ditko did. He's a sneaky bastard. Like he's a spider. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's not supposed to be it. It's a friendly neighbor. He's like, no, he's supposed to be like ah, <laughs> the creepy guy. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And Actually, Baltimore Comic Con was great. I um. I actually got my first sketch cover commission. That never happened before. I was as uh, a person who had seen my work on Reddit. You know, this, this wonderful person. She came to me. She bought my Steel Streets books. And they came back the next day and said, hey, I forgot to ask you yesterday. Would you do a Ninja Turtles sketch cover commission? And I was like, of course. That's never happened before, but I'd love to, you know. So I just did the four turtles and this thing. And it was amazing. And, and then the another person asked me for a Spider-Man sketch cover commission. And then as I was doing that one, another one asked me for a sketchbook. And I was just kind of like, this is, this is this what it feels like? This is what it feels like to be a cartoonist. You know? It was yeah. amazing. It was really cool. And I got yeah. to meet the, uh, the, the kayfabe guys in person, which was nice. Yeah, got, got some zines. Yeah, and, uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Did you, thank did you. You in good shape? Yeah, I, for, I forgot to, to hit you okay. up. I, I got them. Um, yeah, thank you, dude. Because like, it oh, sucks. Man. They man. never come out here. They never come you're to far, LA. Man, you're far. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, but it's you. You would think, though, right, right, that at least one of the cons out here. Right. right. But I, I get it. I mean, I live here, and I don't want to be here. So sometimes, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I don't blame people for not wanting to come here. But right. I do. I do want to say I appreciate you for picking up those. Uh, well, you mentioned it. It's, uh, it's my pleasure. Were you yeah. able? And then were you able to give them some of uh, some Steel Streets? Did you get? I did. Well, I mean, this this is where the ringside community is really amazing because. As I was giving, I was I was introduced myself to to Ed Piscor. And I'm talking to him, and then as I'm giving him the books, somebody who's flipping through his portfolio says, "Oh, I bought the first two issues of that of, of my book," and I'm just kind of like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, I saw you on the on the ringside community," and then and he goes, "He's like, it's a community, man. It's a culture." And I'm like, "This is amazing!" Like, it's, you know, right off the bat, some validation. I'm just like, "Well, okay, well, I made it, so here's my book." You know, what I mean, it's really great, really great. Got to talk craft with uh, with Jim Rugg. It was you know, it was a good time. Good time. Yeah. So how how was the con experience compared to like I mean I know like you said you've only been doing it almost two years right like it hasn't yeah. even been two years yet so from that first con you brought your books to to Baltimore right. which is the most recent show uh, I mean amazing it's like the first one I did was a one day independent uh, comics convention in in Brooklyn right and that was awesome I just had I only had three books at the time and uh, and it was I mean it was a great success I so I was super happy you know. And the next one I did was another one in Long Island in New York. That one was okay. Then I did Brooklyn Comic Con, which was a lot better. And each Comic Con I did, I had more and more issues, you know, to do. Mm -hmm. And then right before Baltimore, I did Fan Expo Boston. Oh, cool. Which was really cool. And funny enough, I got to I got to meet Simon Bisley. And and we hung out. We were pals. You know, I saw him again. We came like we like we're friends, you know what I mean? So which is amazing to think about, you know, because he's such a legend. In, he's Simon Bisley, yeah, that's dope. Simon Bisley, but we were just talking, you know. We were like just cool guys. It was, it was fun. It was a good time. And um, and then Baltimore, I really felt like a real cartoonist, you know, like when you when you dress up, you know, as, as something as a kid or something. You want to be, I want to be. Uh, that was I felt like that. I got at my table. I had my little lap board out. I had my coffee and I had my my thing. And I was just started sketching and drawing, and then people started coming up and buying the books. And it was super, like, it was amazing. Like, I would tell them the quick pitch of, of Steel Streets, and they'd flip through it, they'd laugh, and buy a couple of books. It was, it was amazing. It was amazing. And it, it really feels 
like that whole imposter syndrome like it's like i'm a cartoonist now like i'm proud to say you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah no for sure dude i, I mean i think i think it's awesome like just the way that people how easy it is now to self-publish like Amazing. more than it ever was before i mean even if you don't want to get stuff in print like mm -hmm. being able to have it digitally online mm -hmm. like everybody can do it. it's the most accessible thing yeah. you know like more so than like film television anything like that that's like oh, a way harder sure. thing to fucking crack into for sure, for sure. Um, I mean, so much more people so much more money yeah this is like is one of those like i truly believe if you if you do something every day work hard at it and you just put it out into the world like something will happen it doesn't doesn't have to be astronomical it doesn't have to be huge but there's a there's something that will happen from it just because because you keep pushing you keep going you know there's a yeah. uh, and I have friends, cartoonist friends that I've never met that are, you know, that are in, in Fiji or, in, you know, places, you know what I mean? It's just connection, connection, connection. Is great. Yeah. So I see you're wearing a Steel Street shirt. What other merchandise uh, are you doing and how can people pick the, pick up that shirt? Well, if you go to my site, uh, ZuperioComics.com, there's, um, I got like a little merch page. These are actually, I use T Public. I'm sure it's a company that people know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you just get them. You wait till there's a sale, and it's fourteen bucks, and then you get some cool. I just put up a design or two every now and again, just to keep the keep the thing fresh. But but yeah, it's just t-shirts for now. You yeah. didn't get those toys? Get those three D uh, printed? You should. I had to learn. To, can you believe for that ad? I said to myself, I want to I want to do a toy ad. So I I just learned how to three D model <laughs> to to make the to make the ad. I thought to myself, okay, what's the hardest way I can do this? Let's go. And then I just yeah. I mean, I would love to get that printed. I mean, maybe I have the file. I mean, I could. Yeah. Why that'd not? Be, yeah, that'd be dope. So, yeah. um, yeah. See, so Still Streets 4 working, a country yeah. gentleman. You got the Spider Man bootleg. Yes. W what else you got? And when, yeah. when can we, when can we expect? You said the Spider Man bootleg's done. So, when, when are we going to get that in print? I mean, this month. I'm just, I'm going to proofread it and then send it to the printers and then make the zines because I'm just going to make it myself, I think, with my little guillotine in there. Mm -hmm. Make the zines and then announce it, and then uh, and see what happens. Whoever whoever wants it, they know they know where to find you. Yeah. So, and then yeah, I mean I, it's it's that has been a lot of fun to do. It's just so it stupid. looks like it was fun to do. It was just it's just I thought it was like what's the stupidest thing I could I could do at that moment, and it was just like at one point there's a scene of Stanley in a strip club. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excelsior! It was, yeah. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Any other any other bootlegs you ever thought to do? Or has this like kind of like piqued your interest in in doing other bootlegs because it of the has. response you've gotten? It has a little bit. I'm like, ooh, baby, this is a nice way to just kind of because you know when you have when you're an unknown cartoonist with an unknown title, mm -hmm. it's sort of it's 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 two step it's two barriers of for people to get to know you. You know what I mean? But when you're an unknown cartoonist and there's a familiar title, people are more comfortable with you. So they, they see Spider Man, like I know Spider Man, like oh this is awesome. Who did this? This guy. Oh cool. And then you know they kind of get to know you that way so it kind of made me think I'm like oh man there's i don't have a shortage of fucked up jokes i can do about superman or about batman or about you know about anybody really i, I got you know it's twisted in here i got I, I can do yeah it. so i mean now you know it's not, not that hard it doesn't have to be serious it's just i don't know i might I'm, i think i got a taste for i got a, a little bit of bloodlust going on with the, uh, yeah yeah spider man thing so i don't know yeah we'll see right yeah right now still piece four Country Gentleman. Um, I'm gonna be at Big Apple Comic Con at the end of the year in December. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's all I got going on. All right, cool, man. Well, I mean, I'm super stoked to see all these books that you're pumping out. It's Thanks. almost a monthly basis. It feels like almost, maybe every almost. other month. It it's about every other month. Yeah, I mean, it it should. It's yeah. It's usually I've managed to keep it. One book at least every two months. Yeah, and, and what's is the goal for you to kind of just make a living doing? I mean, I know we were talking about this before we recorded. You right. work in the service industry, much like me. Man, that's right. Yeah. Course, so, yeah. Uh, and it's hectic over there. So, are you oh, yeah. trying to make a living just with this? Like, do, is this kind of what your passion? I mean, I know you do music too, but is this kind of right. where you're kind of leaning towards now? For sure. I mean, um, I I want so it's. I feel like there's a there's a scale. You know, it's it's a balance. And right now it's day job, coffee, whatever, and then there's comics. And 
I I want the scales to tip in in one direction, you know, but that needs to happen. It slowly is happening, or I'm able to you know cut back a few hours here and there to kind of you know. But I'm the guy. I'm drawing pages on my lunch break. You know, I'm doing I'm doing all that stuff. So I'm just kind of working to make it so that you go down to four days, then you go down to three, then you can only do two. And then, you know, you show up for one for out of solidarity. And then at some point, <laughs> you just can't do it anymore. You know what I mean? Then you don't get yeah. enough hours in the day. And then that's it. So that's, that's, the, that's the plan. I mean, plan, rough. For me, the goal is to make comics. And I'm making comics. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's, if it stays like this forever, I'm a happy guy. If it goes crazy, I'm a happy guy. You know, that's the way I see it. I can pay my bills and I can draw my comics. It's good. I don't need a social life. I don't need it. Yeah, I don't, that. who has a social life? Anyway? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I I don't I don't blame you. You know, like I I like to do shit, but you know, like at the same time, I mean, I'm not creating comics, but if I could just do stuff related to comics and not yeah. go out, I'm I'm fine. You know, like absolutely, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want to like again, just uh, congratulate you on your success, dude. It's it's cool Thank watching. You. It's cool watching you post all the time and always got something working seeing you at cons and seeing the reception you're getting like seeing those like you told the sketch covers was really cool to see um it's yeah and i got some cool like uh, some gifts people gave me their their comics you know like i they they did what i did like a year ago you know what i mean where they see a cool cartoonist and like hey what do you think of this i'm like i'm not i, I don't know i'm not i don't have the credentials for, for this but yeah it's zines and stuff like that and and it's funny to see people in real life because you, because I met some people they're like, oh, I, I know you from the cartoonist Cafe Ringside Facebook group. And I'm like, that's insane. I know you from Reddit. I'm like, that's ins- even crazier. You know, it's like, how do you, what do you mean? You know, like, what's, it's, it's insane. It's, it's incredible. Oh, yeah. You it's... Know what? I just remembered there's another project. There's one more thing that I'm doing with the cartoonists that, um, that did in, in the book that did those ads mm-hmm. in some we're doing this thing called Lightwood Magazine, mm-hmm. which is the antithesis of Heavy Metal Magazine. So in, in superhero comics fashion, it came out in 1977, same time as Heavy Metal, and it was just the forgotten magazine. And so each one of us is going to do, you know, it's going to be a little story, stuff like that. But in this first issue, we're, we're going to do one story, but each cartoonist is going to do four pages. And so one guy starts... And then he hands it off and it's a relay race. And then the other person can take it wherever they want it. And then the other person has, and then it's just going to be that. And so we're doing that TBD. I don't know when exactly that's going to come out, but it's, it's, it's in the works. That sounds really dope. It's fun. And and I think the goal with that also is to, you know, get more and more cartoonists, you know, do short pages. It's kind of an, an ongoing cartoonist zine. That's sort of the, the goal here. But That's an awesome idea, dude. Yeah. I love the, I love the, re- how you do the retro stuff you know what i mean you make it feel like it's a comic like my my it's funny because he's like oh they're only a dollar fifty i was like dude i was like dude i was like look at the date on it right 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 you know (laughs) it's obviously did not come out in 86 you know like come on think about it but uh yeah, yeah I, people like Hans, they they always do that they're like oh it's only this is a steal it's only 150 i'm like yeah actually actually wait wait hold on hold on what's that guess uh came out in 1986 haha it's a joke it's five dollars yeah but um all your stuff's really dope. Anybody, everybody that's listening and watching, uh, definitely go support it. Um, I'll drop all of the links on how to pick them up down below. Um, I'll your social media links. I'll drop those too. If you're in the LA area, um, check out Collectors Paradise. You can pick them up in person. Uh, we got all three issues of Steel Streets, and we will have four when that comes out as well. And uh, Madi, thank you for uh, for coming back on, dude. Talking comics with me it was a blast. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Awesome, man. We'll talk soon. All right. Peace.